So, so far we've talked about what the unifying characteristics of bacteria are. And now I want to move on to talk a little bit about general ways of grouping bacteria um, or classifying bacteria, as we could say. The first way is that bacteria can be either called gram-positive or gram-negative. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, gram stain is a type of chemical stain that we can actually mix in with that bacteria and it will stain the bacteria's cell walls different colors and it will show differences in the chemical makeup of the cell wall of the bacteria. All right, so we're de dealing with a cell wall here. So gram stain, um, once we add it to one of the colonies of bacteria that we have here, for gram-positive bacteria, they will stain purple. Okay, so the gram-positive is going to stain purple, as you can kind of see with these bacteria in this diagram here. And what this means is that gram-positive bacteria have cell walls that are um, made only of proteins and carbohydrates. And carbohydrates are basically just sugars. So they're basically made of proteins and sugars. Um, whereas, so they have proteins and sugars in their cell, cell walls, but they do not have lipids. So there are no fats, as we could also say, in their cell walls. So that's gram-positive bacteria. And the, the other main type of bacteria is gram-negative bacteria. And these bacteria have cell walls that are made up of proteins, carbohydrates, and lipids. So the main difference with gram-negative bacteria is that they also have um, lipids in their cell walls, whereas gram-positive bacteria do not have lipids in their cell walls. And this is a really easy way of classifying bacteria because when we put gram-stain in with bacteria, gram-positive bacteria will stain purple and gram-negative bacteria will stain red, as you can see in these drawings, or not drawings, in these pictures here. Uh, the next way we can kind of classify bacteria into general groups is based on their shape. So, um, firstly, the first type we can talk about is called uh, coccus bacteria. And coccus bacteria are um, spherical bacteria. So they are basically tiny little spheres, right? You can see here that they are basically ball, like kind of ball-shaped here. Uh, the next type of bacteria that we have are called bacillus bacteria. And these bacteria are rod-shaped. So you can see in this diagram, um, they are no longer spherical. They are kind of elongated um, rods. And the third type, um, if we're going to classify by shape, is called spirillum. And these are basically spiral-shaped bacteria. So these type of bacteria are a lot more rare in nature, but there are some types of bacteria that have this spiral-like shape, as you can see in this picture. All right, so, so far we have covered the first two points in our overview. We've talked about the unifying characteristics of bacteria, and we've talked about general ways of grouping bacteria together. And finally, I want to talk about what nutrients do bacteria need to survive, and what are some different ways that they can um, take up and process nutrients. So, firstly, we can talk about bacteria either being heterotrophic or autotrophic. So I'll go into that in just one moment. And we can also classify bacteria as being aerobic or anaerobic. So I'll go into those two in a little more detail in the next few slides. So, heterotroph heterotrophic versus autotrophic. So I define these terms again briefly in our um, vocabulary list, um, but just to touch on them again, heterotrophic bacteria need to get organic nutrients from their environment. So they cannot produce their own organic nutrients, they need to get them from somewhere in their environment. Whereas autotrophic, right, the key word here being auto, they can produce their own autotrophic bacteria can make their own organic nutrients. And one type of bac autotrophic bacteria is photosynthetic bacteria. And this is actually an example here of some photosynthetic cyanobacteria, as they're called. 
And these cyanobacteria are actually capable of doing photosynthesis, so of harnessing the energy of the sun to produce more complex organic nutrients from really basic nutrients. Um, another way that bacteria can be autotrophic is they can be um, chemosynthetic. So there's photosynthetic is harnessing the energy of light, whereas chemosynthetic is harnessing the energy from chemical, um, chem basically chemical energy, so the energy from chemical reactions. All right, so the next um, thing I want to talk about in terms of nutrients with bacteria is that some bacteria can be aerobic, whereas others are anaerobic. So what does aerobic mean? Well, aerobic, if you think of like aerobic exercise, um, it's generally kind of exercise where you're breathing, right? So aerobic bacteria require oxygen for cellular respiration. And cellular respiration really is just kind of a very basic process which um, is going to be uh, taking sugars and converting them into energy stores for the cell. So they require oxygen to do this, to kind of produce energy in, those, in their cells. Whereas anaerobic bacteria, so in biology when we have kind of um, the prefix an in front of something, it usually means um, that it doesn't need that material. So anaerobic means bacteria that do not need oxygen. So these bacteria can survive well without oxygen. And one type of bacterial uh, anaerobic respiration is actually a process called fermentation. So these are anaerobic bacteria, and they are able to produce energy stores um, without using oxygen. And this process actually makes alcohol. Um, so these bacteria are very, very important in the production of beer and wine. So these industries could not survive at all without um, the help of bacteria, which are actually going to be producing alcohol as a product of anaerobic respiration. All right, so as a recap of all the main points from today's lesson, we talked about the unifying characteristics of all bacteria. So remember, bacteria are prokaryotic, and they all have the same main parts that we talked about earlier. Um, general ways that we can group or classify bacteria. Um, bacteria can either be gram-positive or gram-negative. And we can also classify bacteria based on their shape, what their shape looks like. Uh, and finally, we talked about what nutrients do bacteria need. Uh, that should be do. Um, so they can be either heterotrophic or autotrophic, depending on where they can get their organic nutrients from. And bacteria can also be aerobic or anaerobic, depending on whether or not they need oxygen to survive. So thank you very much for watching this episode of Holic Canyon Science. I look forward to seeing you again in the future.